Good afternoon to all the viewers and welcome back to ICC Live, World Class Culinary Online. Today we have the last but yet another interesting session in the series of webinars on contemporary desserts. It is on Bell Pistache on Thrumming. I will now I will now hand over to our host, Shanaz Raja, Director of Courses at the ICC Dubai. Over to you, Shanaz. Thank you, Karun. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Contemporary Desserts by Chef Sabine Farid from our Faculty of Cookery or Bakery and Patisserie here at the International Center for Culinary Arts in Dubai. Today, Chef Sabine, for her last webinar in this particular series, is going to demonstrate the concept of a French entremet which is very similar to that of the petit gâteau in terms of elements of texture, complementary flavors, and hidden surprises that show themselves as we eat. But unlike a petit gâteau, which is a single portion, an entremet can be larger and serve more people. As before, I would like to reiterate that this particular webinar series is not just about learning recipes but also about special techniques that will help take you and your dessert making skills to the next level in terms of helping you become and become adventurous in planning the composition and presentation of your desserts. So do watch carefully and don't miss out on the tiniest detail. Now over to you, Chef Sabine. Thank you, Ms. Shanaz. I couldn't hear you half the way, but I, I got you now. Welcome everyone to the last in the series of Modern Desserts. Today we are presenting an entremet. What is an entremet? It's an old French word and now in the modern times it's mostly recognized as stunning edible cakes of art layered with contrasting flavors and textures which when sliced open reveal all kinds of elements from caramel to crunchy to creamy to cakey etc. The portion size of the dessert is elaborate enough to be shared. Sometimes they are finished with shiny glazes or they might uh, be finished with velvet coatings, as you would have seen in our last webinar, the red coating that we did. Our dessert today is called Belle Pistache, translating as beautiful pistachio. Uh, this is the cake that we will be, uh, this is used for our final assembly, and this is what we're going to cut and reveal at the end of the webinar. The dessert has about six components. We are going to present all, and we will share the recipes of all during the webinar. So without wasting much time, we will start off with our first component. I'd like to add one more thing. This is basically a pistachio cheesecake and we are uh, assembling it with complementing flavors and elements. So let's start with the first component, which is the pistachio croustillant or the pistachio crunch. For that, we have over here melted butter. We've melted the butter and we have roasted some semolina to caramelize. Once it caramelizes to this color, it will take about three to four minutes. Then we will simply just add in condensed milk. Some brown pistachio. This also has some milk powder to it. And I'm going to add a little bit of natural green food coloring just to elevate the color a little bit. I'm going to mix this well until combined. At this point, the mixture need not be heated. You can take it off the heat. But the mixture definitely needs to be warm. Once mixed well, it can be pressed down on a base or a ring of 15 centimeters. And this is going to be used as the base of the entremet on which the entire cake or the pistachio cheesecake will sit. Now, as you can see, it's getting bound together. You can increase or decrease or even omit the color if you don't want to add it. 
So the mixture has come together, as you can see. And once done, I will then I have pressed it into a ring like this, 15 centimeter ring, and I've pressed down this base, and then it, I've left it at room temperature to firm up. Uh, you need not add it in the chiller. So this is what you can see in the final assembly. The base out here. This is the base. This green one. This is your pistachio crustion or the pistachio crunch on which your dessert is sitting, on which your cake is sitting. All right. Let's move on to our second uh, component, which is the soft pistachio biscuit. This is what's going to pro uh, provide the cakey texture in the pistachio cheesecake. And this is all inserted inside your uh, cheesecake, uh, which you will see in a while. So I have over here a few ingredients. This is my egg white, which has been whisked with sugar to stiff peak. And here I have uh, pistachio paste, whole eggs, egg yolks, almond uh, powder, and icing sugar, which I've just mixed together. I'm going to mix the egg white along with the pistachio mixture. Mix to combine before adding in the other ingredients. So we've called it the soft pistachio biscuit, or which is going to provide us the cakey texture in the cake. Now this is an important element as we are going to use this element to build other components on it. Once the egg white is mixed through, we will add in our potato starch. Potato starch is easily available in uh, supermarkets, reducing the gluten content in this pastry. I'd also like to say that the pistachio paste that we've used here is easily available in the supermarket. Of course, you will not get the the professional product that you would get from the supplier, but you have a pistachio cream spread which can be used here as an alternative available in hypermarkets. So once I mix in the potato starch, I'm going to add to this mixture some melted butter. are all combined well, I'm going to use it to pour it into 14 centimeter rings and I'm going to add approximately about 135 grams of the batter and I'm going to bake it at about 160 for 8 to 10 minutes and then I will use it for further assembly. So I have used these 14 centimeter rings and I have baked the cake in this ring and I'm going to use it for assembly for the other components. Now this is an acetate sheet, what we use professionally. It's a transparent sheet. I'm going to just insert this to help me release this entire element at the end. In case if you can't source this, then um, you will use a blowtorch maybe to release the entire element or you can even just while frozen rub it around and you will see it will slide off. Yeah. So we'll just reserve this uh, a bit and we'll come to our third component which is um, our sautéed mango. I'm not going to uh, show the sautéed mango because I have uh, just sautéed these diced mango with some uh, butter, I've just melted some butter and I have then added the mango, some sugar and a little bit of vanilla and I've just sorted that for a minute so that the mango doesn't lose shape and then I'm going to use this on the for the assembly on top of the cake which has become firm. 
So here I have one more ring where the cake is at the base and I've topped it with the mango. I'll top it with some more mango right in front of you. And I'm just going to shred this entire mixture and then I'm going to freeze it in the blast freezer till it sets as an even layer. In case if you don't have a glass freezer, in a regular freezer, it could go for about an hour to just firm up. So it just needs to uh, firm up, and then I'm going to assemble the third, com the fourth component on this. But before we go any further, are there any questions, Mishanas, about the first three components? Just a few small questions about uh, the potato starch and things like that, which I've, I've answered for you. So go ahead, Sabine, no issues. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mishana. Okay, so coming to our fourth component, this is the mango passion fruit custard. Fourth component, right? Okay, I lost track. <laughs> All right, the mango passion fruit custard. This is uh, what is going to provide the creamy element on the dessert. And it's also used as a complementary flavor along with pistachio. Mango and pistachio is a beautiful flavor. And we're combining this custard with yet another flavor, passion fruit, because mango passion fruit in itself is a beautiful flavor. So that's what we are going to do now. So we have over here some gelatin sheets which are soaked. And uh, we have some dry ingredients here which I'll just talk about in a bit. And here we have some butter. What I have in the saucepan right here, is uh, the mango and the passion fruit puree. I'm just going to bring it up to a heat, or if you would like to be precise, it's about 50 degrees Celsius. Just bring it up to a heat before I add in the dry ingredients. These dry ingredients comprise of uh, sugar, a little bit of cornstarch. I don't need to dilute the cornstarch over there. It's a very minimal quantity. And I'm using here something known as Pectin X58. This is a gelling and a thickening agent. And it's going to provide a creamy texture to the uh, custard. If you can't source it, you can completely avoid it. You can completely avoid it. It will not affect the uh, setting ability, you also have gelatin which will aid the procedure. So this, this has just come to a heat and I'm going to take it off the heat for a bit and then I'm going to add in the dry ingredients. With the help of a whisk, I'm just going to mix this. And then I'm going to get it back on the heat for a bit. So minimal quantities of the cornstarch and the pectin X58 providing uh, some thickening and a creamy texture to it. Just for a while on very low heat and I'm going to now add in the gelatin sheets. And the butter, softened butter. And this is there, right? The one that I was using. Yes, we will just take it. The heat is very low. I don't want to apply too much heat after adding the gelatin. So, this is going to be your creamy custard. There's enough residue with it to melt the butter. So this is our mango custard. Now this is going to rest on top of the diced mango. So all three elements, this is going to become uh, one element, three in one. I'll just even show that to you all. So these, this is this is our 
uh, where we've talked, uh, the ring where we've talked our mango, the second element. And now we're going to top the mango custard directly on top of this. So we've added the acetate sheet or the plastic ribbon as I showed you. This will, the acetate sheet will aid, will aid the removal of the entire element. I can't tilt this too much because it's still very liquidy. And we're going to add this in the blast freezer for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes till this sets up completely. And if you have a regular freezer, you'd need about one to two, uh, more than about two to two and a half hours for it to set before you use it in the assembly of the final cheesecake. So can we show the one that we have, the other one that is set? So we have one uh, three-in-one element ready to show you. I'd just like to uh, display that. So that uh, uh, you know that where we are heading. So this is the element that's going to be used as an insert uh, within the pistachio cheesecake mixture. So for using this, we just peel off this acetate. We release it from the mold and we peel off the acetate. So this is your element where you have your your uh, pistachio soft biscuit and then you have some sorted mangoes in between over here which are going to provide the bite to the entire dessert and then your uh, mango pistachio cream so that's that we'll place this in the last freezer back again so we're done with the mango passion fruit custard coming to the next component which is our final main component that is holding the entire cake together the pistachio cheese cake so for that, uh, we will uh, just get our ingredients. Okay, we have over here some uh, cream cheese and pistachio paste. Now, since both these mixtures are stiff, I'm going to just warm it up or loosen it a little over the bamari. That bamari is okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to place this bowl. Is this bowl going to fit here? So we'll take a smaller saucepan and uh, I'm just going to put this over the bambari and just mix it casually so that the mixture loosens up a, a little when I, uh, so that I can mix the other ingredients to it. Thank you. I don't want to over mix the cream cheese so that it doesn't split. But as you can see, the mixture cheese, cream cheese is so stiff. It's been out for a long time from the chiller, but still it is so stiff. So it's going to loosen up beautifully once over the bamari. A while on the bambari and we'll go on with uh, showing the other ingredients we have over here a uh, stiff meringue and uh, this is uh, nothing but a white spit uh, with tartar cream of tartar and some uh, caster sugar till it reaches a firm peak i'm going to mix the meringue with the pistachio cream cheese mixture can i have a big bowl uh, sheet? yes no, a bigger steel bowl so that I can combine the entire mixture. So we'll combine the meringue and the cream cheese mixture together. Thank you so much. You can uh, melt the gelatin, squeeze out the excess water, and then place it over the bar. I'm going to 
transfer this entire mixture into a bigger bowl so that I have uh, more space to add in all the ingredients. Simply mixing all the ingredients. You don't want to aerate the mixture a lot, but just to ease the procedure, I will just use a little help from the whisk. lumps from the cream cheese. Once mixed, I will now add into this mixture some gelatin. Now, if uh, uh, we had soaked some gelatin prior to starting the recipe, and what we have done here is that we have uh, uh, removed the excess water from the squeeze, squeezed up the excess water from the gelatin, and I'm just melting it over the bar. Once the gelatin mixes, I'm going to add a bit of the pistachio meringue mixture to the gelatin so that it comes to the harmonious temperature as the remaining of the pistachio mixture. And then I'm going to fold the entire mixture back into this. It's a simple application of using gelatin when used this way. If I would add all the gelatin into the entire pistachio mixture, I would, uh, it would result, the mixture would result in lumps forming. What I'm doing is simply adding in some of the pistachio and meringue mixture into the gelatin mixture and mixing it. I will then add this mixture. I'll just keep it over the memory. You may need to reduce it to one. I'm adding this entire mixture to the discussion that I'm and I'll just mix it in. I'll keep this, I'll reserve this mixture over the bamari so that my gelatin doesn't set on me and I can use it for the assembly of the cheese. Once this has folded in, I'm going to add to this some whipped cream, which we have done prior. We won't switch off the lamp. We'll keep it on. So, so the whipped cream to the mixture. I just fold it in and add it back to the reserve it back on the bag. In case if you have find it difficult to uh, source the pistachio uh, paste, you can keep this loose plate. You can just uh, add some lemon zest instead of the pistachio paste and some vanilla, and you can keep the mixture plain. So here is our pistachio cheesecake mixture ready. This is a fairly simple uh, cheesecake mixture. So this is what it would be like. I will reserve it over the boundary so that it uh, doesn't uh, set while I'm working with the assembly. Okay. So as you can see from the shape of the final cake, this is the mold that we are using for uh, the dessert or the cheesecake and it's a two-piece mold. It releases off, the lid releases off like this and the purpose for using this mold is that you see this tuft in shape coming by uh, using this mold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in or add in 
100 ml of the cheesecake mixture before adding in the other elements. Can you check for me if the uh, element has set? Otherwise, we'll use the other one. And you can just pour some of the pistachio mixture. And you can leave it on the side. Thank you. about 100 ml of the mixture. And I'll just push a little on the sides as well so that I don't have any air pockets. Sabine? Yes, ma'am? Your mic is very sensitive, so you have to be careful with all the noise you make. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I can't uh, see you on the screen as well today. I know, I know. Not a problem. It's just go cool on the noise. Okay. I will definitely try that. So I've just pushed up some of the batter up on the side. This is to release any, uh, to prevent any air pockets in the mixture. And then I'm going to place this insert right onto it, the top side down. And I'm not going to push it through too much as that it would get exposed through the cake later on. Then I will top it up with some more of the pistachio mousse mixture on the sides to start with. At this point, I'm going to seal the mold. So it just fits in, it just tucks in like so. And then I keep going in the crevices with my pistachio mixture. Okay. Now comes the noisy part again. Just add everything. So we've kept it over the bamari so that the Gelatine does not set during the assembly because the gelatine is a. We've had about four, four and a half sheets of gelatine, that's why that would set the mixture quite fast. We all from the same thing. Thank you. So, Mr. I'm trying, I hope I'm not noisy. Now with entreme, you can uh, leave it at this stage or I can even have a pistachio sape at this point uh, to seal the entire mixture. So you can uh, add in components, you can minus some, it's up to you once you start uh, designing your dessert. So we reserve this there. And this will now go in the blast freezer. For us, it would take about a good solid hour in the blast freezer. If you have a regular freezer, then it would take about six hours for it to set. So 
So we've finished uh, our pistachio cheesecake now and we'll move on to our pistachio glaze. This is the uh, glazing element that you will, the green glaze that you're seeing which, are going to, which is giving a shiny sheen to the entire product. For the pistachio glaze, really simple to make, we have over here water, sugar and some glucose syrup which we are just going to bring to a boil or to about 103 degrees celsius. So with this sugar syrup, before the mixture comes to a boil you can stir it. But after the mixture starts to come to a boil, don't stir it, otherwise the sugar will crystallize. Just stirring it now before it's coming to a boil. Prior to starting the glaze, I have yet again soaked the gelatin sheets. The required uh, quantity for this. And I have over here some condensed milk as well, which we'll just use in a while. So I won't stir this mixture anymore. And with the help of a thermometer, I will also monitor the temperature. I have to heat this at 103 degrees, to bring it up to 103 degrees. So we can't, we couldn't have done this step before. So this will take a bit of a time. It's just coming to a boil. Almost there. Yes, ma'am. Now, while that is going to come to 103 degrees, can you tell yes. us how you made the microwave sponge? Because you know that's something that that's going to be a nice garnish, not very nice to eat, but it's a lovely garnish for people. So, can you just briefly talk about it? Uh, yes, ma'am. That's a mixture that is aerated in the a batter that is aerated in the uh, the siphon. So, um, and then it is poured into cups and then it is microwaved and then left rested and then we uh, use it. So, I'll have to probably send that recipe. No, no, it's just about, you know, people, uh, when, you, when you show it, when you do the decoration, they probably wonder about it. So, I thought you should just describe it. That's it. Yes. So, if you I don't have a sight, when I looked at it, actually, it was so light and beautiful, right? Like coral. Yes. Yeah. So yes, if you yes. don't have a siphon at home, keep doing, keep working. It's okay. Yeah, so I'm just adding some condensed milk to this sugar syrup. We reached 103. And uh, Shri, would you uh, squeeze off the gelatin? Excess water from the gelatin. <laughs> I'm just mixing that in. And then you can add in the gelatin as well. And I'm adding in the gelatin to dissolve. I mix this well together. And I have over here with me in this bowl some white chocolate. I'm going to pour on this, this condensed milk mixture. onto the white chocolate. I'm just going to let it sit for a minute before I emulsify it. So I have over here the stick blender which I'm going to use to emulsify this mixture. 
Now the purpose out here is not to incorporate too many air bubbles into this mixture, otherwise they will show through to the glaze. And the best equipment now to be used is the bar mix. It eliminates the air bubbles rather than incorporating them. So the technique would also be not to uh, remove and immerse the blade again and again, but to keep it steady down in the bowl. And I just emulsify it. Even if air does incorporate at this stage, before using the glaze, we can emulsify it once again. The chocolate has all melted in and at this point I'm going to add color and emulsify yet again. You can choose to leave it without color if you are wanting to use it like this. However, depending upon the cake that you're presenting, uh, the color would be a requirement. So I'm adding water soluble color, a bit of green and some yellow to achieve the pistachio green. It's easier to incorporate drop by drop. So how much color to add is mentioned in your uh, in your uh, the recipe card which will be shared with you. It's less of green and more of yellow. Water soluble color easily available in uh, pastry supply shops. And once the color is in incorporated, since this is a it is as it is a reflective and a shiny glaze, but we'll add a little bit of uh, silver dust to it as well to add on the sheet. It is completely optional and you can avoid it. This is going to give a metallic finish uh, to the glaze. It won't be evident from far when you come and see the cake up front, then it shows. Add the powder. And I'm just going to emulsify. Now this glaze can't be used right away, it has to uh, rest overnight for um, the, the, for the fat in the chocolate to solidify and for the gelatin to solidify and for the glaze to be reheated and used. So we are done here. Now we are going to cling film this. We see air bubbles at this point, so we're going to do a contact cling film and we will do a cling film of the whole bowl and we'll remove the contact cling film before we add it in the chiller till this mixture cools down a little and uh, then we will uh, use it the next day uh, at about, uh, we'll heat it about 40 degrees and let it come to about 35 to 37 degrees Celsius before using it to glaze our frozen cake. The cake has to be frozen to apply this glaze, otherwise it will not hold. So we will now remove uh, that and we are ready for um, glazing our cake. But before that, do we have any other questions, Ms. Shanaz, regarding the components? Ms. Shanaz, can you hear me? Yeah, what would happen if you didn't yes. rest, rest the glaze and you directly just pulled it to your 35 or 40 degrees and used it, what would happen? Yeah, we, uh, for this particular glaze, there are some instant glaze as well, but for this particular glaze, since we have chocolate in that, the coating is uh, a much better coating. Otherwise, the glaze would generally slide off and it wouldn't give a very thick coating to your cake okay. in the case. So, uh, should we just proceed? Oh yeah, we have a poll as well, Mishanas. Yes, we do have a poll. I was letting you talk, not a problem. So, because this, uh, you know, desserts and um, entremets and the petit gatos that we've been showing is all about combination of flavors. So that's why. So let's see what they think about which flavors go together. Yes, thank you. Sir.
Yes. Okay, so are the answers which, coming in? Yeah, so which of the flavors are less likely to complement each other? So uh, the first one is orange and chocolate. The second is mixed berries and guava. And the third is coconut and passion fruit. Yes. And the answer, yes. So a majority of the people say it's mixed berries and guava. Then we have a few who say chocolate and orange and a few who say coconut and passion fruit. Yeah, but the answer is mixed berries and guava. And that is so because uh, uh, the guava also has hints of uh, berries, like there's something known as a strawberry guava. And it does have a berry element to it. So the flavors would mingle with each other. You can't to distinguish between the flavors and uh, so uh, maybe the guava might even at times overpower the uh, berries that's why these wouldn't contrast with each other the flavors and hence they will not complement uh, each other unlike the chocolate and orange or the coconut or passion fruit so yes the answer is mixed berries and guava so we'll just go ahead and uh, now show you the glazing of uh, the uh, complete on from it and then we will slice this cake and we'll show you the reveal the inside and I'm just waiting for Sri to heat our glaze uh, which is um, uh, which we had prepared yesterday so that it rests overnight and then I'm ready to glaze now the thing is that I had uh, brought it to the working temperature which is between 35 to 37 degrees but it has cooled down a little and uh, I have to heat it up again at about uh, for about 20 seconds to get it back to the ambient temperature. Now, while I check the temperature of this sheet, you can kindly get the freezer, the entree from the freezer, because the one that we've assembled now uh, will not be frozen as yet. So we've uh, had one from before. I want to aim to reach at a temperature of at least 35 to 37. All right, this is good to go. So I'll just show you how we glaze and uh, any other principles that we will apply. So this is our frozen one. Now when you take it out from the freezer, sometimes there is condensation or there are ice particles. Make sure that you rub it off clean. Otherwise, because of the ice particles, the glaze might, the glaze might not stick or adhere to your uh, answer name. Keeping all my tools intact. Maybe the flat spot should be perfect. Just keeping my tools intact because I won't have much time to wait uh, once I start the glazing procedure. So unfortunately, we will not be able to garnish or uh, assemble this cake as of now because it's frozen. How that's why we've kept one ready. So once you're ready, for uh, keep your entremet on a wire rack. You can even use a ring uh, if it uh, suits you better. And then you just pour the glaze in the center and let it slide off. The glaze that. Uh, uh, you will have excess glaze, but uh, it's better to have the excess and you can uh, freeze the remainder for use next time. It will store in the chiller for about two weeks and just make sure that all the sides are coated and your glaze will stay in the freezer for about three months. So just tap up the excess. And another thing to do after you feel that the excess has slid down, you will lift off the entremet, hold it in your hand and you have to scrape off this excess as well. You take the knife and you scrape off. You have to be a little patient with this. Keep rotating it. and scrape. Scrape the drip off. This is an important step. 
or else it will leak onto your base. So this will take a while. And once you are free from clearing or scraping all of it, then you can gently place it on your base. So I won't continue with more because we are running out of time. So you will just place it on your base at this point in time after you have cleared off everything. Now we are ready for the big reveal. And we are going to slice our cake now. And we have a hot knife to slice through our cake to reveal the components. Hope you have enjoyed this series of modern desserts. And if you have any questions, please, please feel free to get back to us about the microwave sponge. Yes, we will get back to you with the recipe as well. I'm going to slice through from the center. And show the components inside. Is it uh, showing it up? Yeah. Alright, so this is uh, the end of our series. Hoping to see you yet again with uh, another episode of webinars. Thank you for joining us. Over to you, Ms. Shalas. Thank you, Sabine. This is so amazing. Really, you make it look so simple. Really, it's lovely. And Russian, the coral is the microwave sponge. And there are many recipes online, but if you stay tuned, at some point we will show you how to make that yes. microwave yes, sponge. Definitely. And if you come to ICCA, you will learn all the things that Sabine has been showing us because these are things that we do in our regular classes over here. Uh, keep trying, keep making new things with all the things that you've learned. Do post it on social media and tag us into it. And uh, it, it makes us so excited. We keep sharing all these pictures that we see on Instagram with each other. Thank you very much, all of you. And on behalf of all of us, thank you very much for attending. Do stay tuned. And in a very, with a short break, we will be back with you with many new exciting series. Yes, there are many more series coming up. Uh, very exciting, but I'm not going to tell it to you now. So you just stay tuned and look out for our emails. Thank you and bye-bye.